What's up, Perfectly Average Golfers? Welcome back to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. We've been doing a lot of course vlogging. I'm not gonna lie, even my dad is saying it's getting a little bit boring watching the same thing over and over and over again. So we're doing a little bit of a different format here today as we're playing a brand new course. We're gonna be doing a little bit of a course review alongside the normal round that we're gonna be playing. So not nearly as much talking about my average game, but more so talking about what's going on with the course. With that in mind, we're down in Greenville. It's perfect. It's like high 50s today. It's absolutely wonderful. Not a cloud in the sky and we're playing at the preserve at Verde. So we're gonna take a look at everything. I'll be doing some commentary back in my studio, kind of talking over the practice facility, everything you'd wanna know. And we'll do more of a course layout review, more than just a normal course vlog, talking about just my game. So it's something a little bit different, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get at it. Welcome to the Preserve at Verde. Just southeast of downtown Greenville, this public course teleports you away from the city and enters you back into the arena of forests and mountains that surround the northern South Carolina landscape. Elevation changes and dense tree lines will make up the majority of this par 72 course. Come hungry and likely leave humble, as the beauty that outlines this course will also mask the teeth that await you on every hole from any tee box. Today we try and tackle this monster on perfectly average golf course review and walkthrough of the Preserve at Verde. Attempting to max out this course will see you play 7,100 yards and will rate a 73.9 with a 143 slope from the black tee boxes. Looking for relief from a shorter tee box may cut off some of the yardage, but the strategic choices needed to par out the preserve will never change no matter where you happen to tee off from. A weekday round of golf can run you around $60 on a primetime weekday tee time here, or as much as $70 on the weekends. But fret not. This course can be found on Golf Now with hot deals as low as $35, and also on the Upstate Golf Card if you happen to be a Greenville local. I will say this much though, even if you pay face value, you are getting what you pay for. Looking for a solid warm-up before your round? The Preserve at Verde boasts a full professional practice area, including a grass-inclusive driving range, a very large putting green with multiple angles of elevation change, and even a dedicated chipping and pitching green that comes with an accompanying practice bunker. For me, the practice area was actually one of the most comprehensive and best taken care of facilities that I've played out in a long time, and the prices just for range balls if you're just looking to practice are extremely fair. Going for from a small bucket at $5 to a large at 10. But enough of that. Let's get into this course and try to tackle this monster here at the Preserve at Verde. All right, hole number one here at Preserve at Verde. Starter set is one of the easiest holes that they've got on the course just to kind of get you started. 355 from the Blues. That bunker right in the middle plays about 315. So with the descended fairway that we have here, driver really isn't that much needed, it doesn't feel like. So I'm gonna be hitting three wood off the start, and if we hit something clean, it should give us about 100 yards in. Yep, right in the middle of the fairway. So safe play off the tee box, left me about 140 to the front, which is where this pin is playing. So it gives us a pitching wedge in. I think we could have taken driver, but there's no need to risk it. Here we go. It's got to get to the right side, it looks like. Green should go right to left. Let's find out. Oh, that's going to bleed right. I think the number was right though. It's a 135 club for me. I just kind of caught that off the heel. The greens out here at Preserve Verde are running at a 10 today, they said, which is pretty normal for this course. Uh, so with this pin position and kind of with this lie, the ball sitting up, the rough out here is, can, uh, it's kind of weird. It's kind of a platform, but if you find yourself underneath the first level, it definitely sucks in. So I've got sand wedge. Just gonna push this thing close to the fringe and hope that it kind of rolls for me. That's a little long. But the idea was right. Definitely want to give these greens some respect. All right, I got this putt left to right and down the hill. So even though it's about a 20 foot putt, we got to give this some respect that it's going to run on us. Speed was near perfect. I barely even touched that. Bogey in the first. Hole number two at Preserve is a par three. From the Blues, it's playing about 145. 
Um, but with a little bit of helping wind, I'm gonna be hitting pitching wedge here. The pin today is about mid, and the card is giving us the tip that we wanna be right center of the green because it definitely will go right to left. So that's what we're trying to do. Avoid that bunker to the left. There also is a bunker on the right. I've got my 135 club in hand. Coming around, it's heading right for it. Good, good shot. Maybe on a green. Yeah, it may have been a little long. Caught it kind of thin. Oh boy, I didn't see it hit the green. It hit the green, but it may have bounced long. So I ended up landing on the green, but again, these greens are really hard and really fast. I cooked that 135 club pretty hard. It rolled over long. Now we've got a pretty tricky chip, but kind of like the card was saying, the greens we imagine are going to be going left to right for us. So we're going to try to put something up there and give some respect to these greens. Uh, as far as their speed is concerned, hopefully we can get something close and still save par. And again, this ball is sitting up pretty good here. So I'm going to try to get something to lift into the air and see if it can't sit nice and nice and tight for us. Yeah, sit tight. Perfectly played. That's the thing about this rough out here in South Carolina in the Greenville area. It, it sits up and it can get kind of fluffy, but if you find your ball deep into it, it you kind of have to chop at it a little bit. So the fact that that was sitting up gave us an opportunity to bump that up in the air. That was a great shot. Should have played it outside the cup. All right, the third hole, the ranger said, is kind of where the golf course starts, which is not great since we went bogey bogey. 425, par four, descended fairway, but a tight fairway that the, the ranger said you definitely want to be on the left side of, as not only does it keep you safe from out of play, but also that gives you a better look at the second shot, which is the green over there towards the right, small dog leg to the right. Got driver, got to hit straight. Stay there. I think it's okay. All right, so we stayed in play, but just barely. Um, and this is the thing, you know, we say about where you want to be off the tee box. The green is just to the right, in towards all of these these trees and stuff. I don't have a look at it. There's no way I'm going to get it there. So I've got to take a easy pitching wedge just to kind of take my medicine and give us a look. So that's why you definitely want to be on the left side of this fairway. That is way too far left. But we'll have a look at it. All right, 85 yard shot here. Wind is kind of helping. So we're taking a three quarter sand wedge. Gotta hopefully get this close. The green is falling back towards us. So we gotta carry it there. of where I wanted it, but I think the distance was okay. What it's worth, we haven't been in the bunkers yet, but they do look like they're really well taken care of. Great sand, and it looks like people have come through to rake them up, so big props, Preserve, big props. Should have a pretty big slider right to left here, kind of up the hill. Gonna take this about two feet out. Wow, look at that thing run. Holy. <laughs> Much more left to right than I thought. Yep. Oof. All right, tough double right there, but that's the punishment of missing the fairway in the wrong spot and then having to take your medicine and then, again, tough greens out here. Hole number four is playing 410 from the Blues, par four. The bunker on the right-hand side is the line. You want to try to keep it to the left, and then it goes dog leg to the right. It's about 250 or so to clear the bunker from the Blues, so driver is definitely uh, possible, which is what we're going to take here. Perfectly placed. All right, perfect drive. What about 260? 
which got us just on the back side of where that bunker would have been. And it leaves us about 170 in. Wind is helping just a touch. I've still got seven iron here though, because that pin is back. Nice easy stroke. Hopefully get a green and rag. Caught some dirt on the right side of the green, and I think that's gonna make it roll. We'll see. All right, so that kick to the left put us in a very weird spot here. We're just off the green and long, and the green is gonna roll away from us and a little bit right to left if we push it too far. So what I'm getting at here is we just need to get this thing on, give ourselves a chance. Yeah, maybe a little bit shorter than I would have liked, but that's gonna leave us a good look at par. I've got this down the hill and a little bit right to left. You definitely don't wanna to be too hard with this. Yeah, the speed was actually really good. Bogey golf. Now the guys at the clubhouse when we were kind of talking through everything said that this course out here as far as public courses in Greenville are concerned are um, is, is one of the more difficult ones that are out there. And you can start to maybe see a little bit why even though we're just through the first four holes. The thing about a lot of the greens out in Greenville is I've noticed they all run around a 10 plus, which means that you're always gonna be hitting a little bit scared. And sometimes when you hit a little too gingerly, things can go very, very wrong. So putting has kind of cost us so far. Bogey golf onto the fifth. All right, we got our first par five here on hole number five, and it's a very tricky one. We've got some sand over to the right, but that's really not too much of a cause for concern. The thing is, driver's actually gonna be way too much club. It only takes about 250 to get all the way to the back trees that are over there. So I've got driving iron, is we're gonna have a dog leg to the left, and uh, you know me, I, I slice my driver. So we definitely don't wanna miss right here. The miss would be closer to the left, but there's really no way you can cut off anything here. So here we go, I've got driving iron. It is against the wind. It should be the perfect club though. Oh, it's gonna bleed right. Get in the bunker. Ooh, I don't think I've ever sliced this club. First time for everything. All right, we are punishing ourselves pretty badly right now with putting ourselves in some bad positions. That one went out of play, couldn't find it, taking a drop. Um, we had to hit a really good second shot here though. It's got five hybrid, it's about 270 to get all the way there, which we don't have. So we're hitting about a not 190 shot, playing it up close to where this creek is, which we're trying to stay short of, which we shouldn't have a problem doing that. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if you guys are gonna see that on the camera, but <laughs> that went through the smallest of sliver through those branches. The backdrops for the last handful of holes have been absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we were playing this course right after Thanksgiving, so everything, of course, is getting a little bit brown and all that, but uh, this course is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so with this, this is our fourth shot here after the drop. We got about 100 yards, but helping win. Bunkers guarding us on the left, and it looks like the green is sloping left to right. So we're going to try to go right at it with about a you know, nice, easy full swing. That's going to go right again. The distance was good. I've just been pushing everything just a bit to the right. May just be a setup thing. I'm not really slicing the ball too much. We'll figure it out. It's a good shot though. Long par putt here after the drop. Uh, again, it was about pin high, but we just pushed it right. Got a nice little slope kind of falling away from the green. Should go right to left and up the hill. It's gonna give this one a lot of courtesy from that right to left side. Not sure what that hit, but, <laughs> but that's not a bad lag putt. All right. 
Well, first penalty we've taken so far, but the greens continue to be a bit baffling. I'm not gonna lie though, we've hit some pretty solid putts. Um, it's just those ones that were within five feet are sliding a lot more or a lot less than we're giving them credit for at the moment. So there's some figuring out to do, double bogey. We'll find par eventually, don't you worry. All right, next hole up, it's a par three. From the blues, it's playing about 218. There's water going left to right, kind of hugging this green which obviously you want to try to avoid. That bunker on the left is more there for intimidation than actual purpose. Um, I'm gonna be hitting four hybrid here, and we don't want to be short, we don't want to be right. Pin is on the right side, but it looks like it's on the long right side. So four should be enough, it's about my 200 yard club. Um, we just don't want to be short, which is why we're hitting this thing. Definitely some space long. I will say as well, it is really refreshing to see that on these par three tee boxes, there is some good sand coverage all over the place. So they're definitely taking care of these tee boxes, which is awesome. Left. We'll see. There's some space over there. Didn't, didn't catch that all that clean. Caught it very poorly, actually. I will say, again, just kind of reviewing over the course, not only did we really impress with the quality of the bunkers look like, but these greens are immaculate. Everything's been rolling really true. It's just really fast. <laughs> so that four hybrid, it did stay in play. You could kind of see me walking up to it. And it did land about pin high. So it was the right club, about a 200 yard club with some helping wind. We said a little bit of an overcorrection on directionally where we put it. So up and down chance, lots of green to play with. And we've got to give respect that this green's going to roll out. We'll play a little bit of a bump and run here, I think. Yeah, that's pretty much perfect speed. Just wanted to go a little bit left to right on me. I like that. It's a good chip. And again, even for late November, the views here are awesome. I mean, I'm very excited to come back and play this course probably after the winter is over, when everything starts greening up because, man, beautiful course. Oh, <laughs> these things are snapping. Wow. <laughs> finish. Alright, a little bit of a weird turnaround here between six and seven. There's the six green, but seven's tee boxes, if you're playing the blues, whites, or the blacks, are over to the right. So if you drive up to where this guy's cart is and try to putt, you have to come back, which is what we're doing. Uh, it's about 400s here. Wind is right in our face. The bunker that you may or may not be able to see all the way to the top is like 270. So we don't have that quite with the wind in our face. It's gonna be driver. See if we can take that line though, same spot over towards that uh, that bunker line. Alright, great drive. Right side of the fairway. It leaves it to about 175 to get to the middle of the green. I'm not really 100% sure where this pin is, but I've got 7 iron here. I'm gonna give this a full 100% stroke. Hopefully, if we catch this clean, we'll get a little bit of a roll up there. Bleeding right. Found the trap. Greenside bunker. It was not, again, not a great piece of contact overall. I'm doing some weird stuff with these irons. Got to figure that shot out. Just for what it's worth, again, this landing space between where I was and the bunker is maybe 35, 40 yards. Uh, if you can get the hold of a driver, you've got a little bit more space up in front, but that bunker actually is taking off way more than it looks like it is. So a very difficult tee shot, but if you can find the fairway, you will get rewarded with a pretty open look at the green. give it enough so that was our first look hitting out of the bunkers and the sand is thin it's compact and uh, i was a little scared that i was going to thin that one over into the other bunker so left it a little bit short up and down try all right green should be coming right to left for us gonna play a little bit off the front foot try to get a little bit of lift and hopefully it kind of settles just to the right of the pin that was the left of the pin but I hit it how I wanted to, so can't be mad about that. There we go. 
tonight, hole number eight. Par four, steep dog leg to the left. Uh, apparently you just want to get to the top of the hill, which is where that bunker is. For reference, I'm hitting off the blues, which is 415. There's the back box. The, the championship tee out here is, <laughs> is no joke. Even the 6700 from the blue is a bit of a stretch for me. So got some math to do here to figure out what club I want to hit, and then we'll be with you. All right, I think driver could be okay, but I'm going to play the safe three wood here just because we don't want to be right with this deep dog leg to the left. So we're taking the line right over the right side of the left bunker. Hopefully we catch that slope. Played that <laughs> exactly on the line. I will say, with the distance and just how these tee boxes are lined up, um, it's definitely a challenge just off the tee box for me as an average golfer who, if this is the first time watching the channel, about a 10 handicap here in the mountains. Um, so the fact that we're kind of thinking through our shots a little bit more diligently is definitely helping us out. And that's something that I would recommend if you come out here is play the safe numbers because that was a very challenging tee shot. Driver would have been fine, but that three wood was hit exactly on our line, dead straight. So we gotta take that. All right, so if we would have taken driver, we could have gotten down the speed slope a little bit, but it's, again, an aggressive play to say the least. Blind shot here, playing about 180. It's super down the hill. We're gonna be going right over towards where that little crevice in the trees are for this next shot. I've got six iron with this one. That's gonna bleed right. Man, all the irons are slicing today. It's going to be very right. Distance, we'll see, but it's going to be very right of the green. All right, difficult shot here. I got distance was actually okay, but we were just a lot further right than we wanted to be. Had to carry a bunker, and the pin is sitting right there. So we just got to get this thing up in the air. Going to open up the face. Anything on the green is fine. That's going to be okay. It's long. Actually, no, it's not. That might be really, really good. You know, the worst part of my game over the last couple of weeks has been the inside 120 yard range. All of a sudden today, we're slicing a lot of our, uh, our iron. So we'll have to figure that out. Um, but largely the up and downs have been pretty okay. We just got to keep hitting good putts and uh, we'll get something on par. Uh, this is a very difficult course though. I'm not going to lie to you. So 6,700 is already a bit of a test for my game. And we're seeing that even 50 yards here or there off the tee box leaves us with some very difficult approaches. So here we go. Got to get a long one for par. Yeah, again, though, I, I really do mean this. You know, we've been playing a lot of courses down here in Greenville that are off of the Upstate Golf Card. This one has been, with the Rock, top two so far. This is unbelievable views. And again, it's late November. If we were here maybe two weeks earlier, it would have been unbelievably iconic. Long par putt. Let's get at it. It is left to right. The whole way. <laughs> Still bogeys. Really cool tee box back here. And the blacks are giving you a bit of a workout. Last hole here on the front nine before we call this video it for part one and then go into part two. Guy at the clubhouse said that there is blind water here and he's absolutely right. From the white boxes, he said a 160 shot is fine. From back here with the wind against us, it's about 210 before you start getting yourself in trouble. The line is just to the left of that bare tree that you see on the right-hand side. So I've got five hybrid here, which is about my 190 club. And we're gonna take this uh, more left than right, say that much. That should be perfect. Yep, little the fairway. We'll see what that leaves us. Par fives are killer. The fact that you really can't hit too much driver out here. There was a lot more space. I think maybe a five wood or like a 220 shot would be okay if you go left. Um, but we're right in the middle of the fairway. Uh, there's no way we're getting there in two, no matter where we hit, because this goes steep up the hill. I've got five hybrid again. I'm going to just go straight over the top of this tree. I should be able to get it up enough to get over it without having to hit anything. So, nice easy shot. Should leave us about 100 yards in if we hit the fairway. We'll see. Nice. 
Yeah, I, I, that should be, I mean, I hit that as perfect as I possibly could. That's a 190 club, so hopefully it, it gets us into the fairway. It's just tough because if you can kind of see it just past the tree, the slope comes straight down. So, I don't know, we took a little bit of an aggressive line, but we hit that perfect, that's all you can ask for. Well, there is a bit of a shelf up here before this slope comes down. We definitely landed over towards the right and just trickled down. So we've got a long way to go still here. It's a blind shot too, so ee, we'll see. Ball just above my feet, blind shot. The tree that's kind of sitting in the middle, we're going towards the right side of that. That's the line. Got eight iron. That's going to be left. But we finally got some draw on the ball, so we can't be too upset about that. Yeah, this is a challenging course, um, and definitely one out here that I would say, if you're shooting around hundreds, high 90s, hundreds, it's gonna really put some test on you. Cause I, you know, I shoot high 80s, low 90s, and <laughs> we're playing straight bogey golf. Positionally, you have to be perfect on this course. So that's been the big struggle so far, but we're learning, and the course is, is gorgeous. It's a very challenging hole though. So another lesson that we just learned, double check where the pin position is before we hit. <laughs> Because this green is huge front to back. And I played the front number, which was 150. And we landed about that off of the ascended green look. This is playing closer to 180, no problem. I should have hit probably five or, or six here. Uh, we got to get up and down. Green is tiered. Got to lift this thing and get it up there. A little long, a little left, but... I wanted to play this left side and it did roll back. It's just a little long. Now look at this green. This is a very challenging green. It's a bit of a false front. That's the first tier. Big slope. There's the second. And you can kind of see the elevation change here to get to the third tier. Very difficult green. Definitely double check your pin positions before you approach. Slow down. Yikes, 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 yikes. Good confident roll for the bogey save. <laughs> All right there, perfectly average golfers. There's the front nine at the Preserve at Verde. And my goodness, the staff here was not kidding. This course is challenging. A lot of it is positionally. You gotta put yourself in good positions to have a chance at it. And uh, for the most part, we have not been in the perfect positions, which is to be expected, I think, for the first time through. So it's plus 11 on the front nine. Nothing on the card that was just par or under, but we, we had a couple of good looks. So that's the great news overall. The course is unbelievable. When I was doing my little pre-intro, I actually missed it, but there is actually a full-on chipping and bunker practice area as well, just off the side of the driving range. So there's a lot of really cool stuff here for the practice facility. The normal greens fees are between 50 and 60, I think, normally, but you can find the course on Golf Now. And if you're in the Greenville area, highly recommend the golf cart. Got to play this for 25, thanks to the golf cart that we had. So there's the front nine. We'll be right back into the back nine. Hope you guys are really enjoying this new kind of course review style video, more than just course vlogging. Hopefully uh, the editing process will be pretty smooth for you as well. So there it is, front nine plus 11. We'll be right back in part number two. Make sure you subscribe along to know when that goes live, and we'll see what we can do in the back nine. Till next time, stay perfectly average.